Our next guest calls herself the Comedy Beyonce, which means I need a new nickname. Welcome to the stage. <laughs> Author, stand-up, and hilarious person. It's Lennon Hughes, isn't it? All right. Hi. How you doing? Welcome. Good to see you. Good Hi, to see you. To Thanks see for being you. here. Hi, guys. Hi, audience. Hi. Oh, let me get comfy. Jesus Christ. Talk to me. As you wish. Uh, <laughs> in your, you, do, you have a book out, Living yes. My Best Life, Hun. Yes. Hun or huh? Hun. Hun. Living yeah. My Best Life, Hun. I'm Living British. My Best Life, Hun. Yeah, you know, I get it now. Yeah. You describe moving from the UK to pursue comedy in the US. Yes. And you say you made more money in one year in America than your whole life in Britain. Yes. What made comedy in the UK so much? Wait, it's wait. No, I'm just seeing what you're saying. Carry on. Yeah. What made comedy <laughs> in the UK made, so much yeah. harder? What made comedy in the UK so much harder? I'm not a white man. Right. <laughs> Basically, like, Britain, like, is systemically racist. So, like, they're not going to call you the N-word to your face, but, like, you'll just feel like one sometimes. And so they treat you in a way where if you're not a white guy, there's not a lot of things you really can get to the top at, like, exceeding. And comedy is, like, the main thing. Comedy, acting, anything in the entertainment, it just pays to be a white man, and I'm the opposite of that. So uh, <laughs> it didn't work for me. It, it did work. I was doing well, but do you know he was just, like, just maintaining this level. Like I just kept watching all my like white guys, like my white friends that just look like you. Would go, <laughs> they would go and say a couple jokes and they'd be famous like that overnight. And you know when your parents are like, how come James is on TV and you're not? And I'm like, James is a dick, mum. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so that's basically what happened. I just was a black woman in England trying to be a comedian and that's why it was harder. But America, Love black women here. They embraced me. It was great. Thank you, America. I do the best time. I do think there's a lot of, I mean, I think there are a lot of people uh, that would be surprised to hear that the U.S. comedy scene is not riven by systemic racism. Why would they be shocked (laughs) at that? Wait, what? Listen, the biggest comedians in the world right now come from America, and most of them are black men. So... Really and truly, America's actually doing, when it comes to racism in comedy, America's doing better than everybody. Like, America's doing, well done, America. Hey. Yeah. Okay. But everybody, yeah, no, see, look, at the, look at the comedians. Whoopi Goldberg was successful. In she doesn't even have eyebrows. They let, they let a black woman with no eyebrows be like one of the biggest comedy actors in the world in America. Whatever, didn't you pitch a show with Whoopi Goldberg? I did, in the UK, and they didn't want it. Is that, shock indeed. Shock what? and awe. Can you believe it? Me and Whoopi, it was called Looking for Whoopi. We were going to go around America because I'm trying to be Britain's answer to Whoopi Goldberg. And we pitched it. Whoopi said yes, she'd love to do it. And no British TV channel wanted it. <gasps> exactly. Hey. Exactly. And that's when I was like, I, if I can't even get a show with Whoopi Goldberg off the ground, then I have no business being in this country. So I came in. So yeah. And. Somehow Kevin Hart flies you to Las Vegas. Yes. That's a sentence like <laughs> Kevin Hart flies you to Las Vegas that captures so much about busyness. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that's a busy person. He's so busy. Yes. He's very, I love Kevin. He's my boy. So he um, saw a clip of me doing stand up like at this thing called the Edinburgh Comedy Festival, which is like the Brit- biggest arts festival in the world. It's in Scotland every August. And I did a show there called To Catch a Dick. And uh, <laughs> it's now on Netflix. Check it out. It's very funny. And uh, essentially... He um, basically was like, this girl's amazing. I need to meet her. But he's so busy that I could only meet him in Vegas. <laughs> and we couldn't have a meeting because he couldn't. He didn't have the time to like take away. So I just followed him around for the day. And that was, and that's what we did. Because <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have the time to put in the schedule to talk to me. So we had the meeting in the back of his car, then in a hotel suite, then backstage at some massive venue right before he went on stage. And yeah, it was great. And on his podcast, it was amazing. How, yeah. How do people maintain that? What, it's it's ex- epic. Wouldn't you love that? I hate that I have time for this show. I wish. <laughs> Jesus. It's unbelievable. I wish I was busy. Having I a nice wish. conversation. No, I look. I like look. What's important to keep busy. Yeah. Just seems epic exhausting. To be busy. No, it's not. It's amazing. <laughs> Being busy and rich. Wouldn't you love that? I just don't want to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just want to be weird. Yeah, no, I love it. During college. Yes. You were identified on a Facebook page. Yes. As 
the university's biggest hoe. Yes. <laughs> that was just a, an anonymous post. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of people dragged you on there. Dragged me to filth. Um, and it wasn't true. There were actual real hoes doing the dirt, but they were undercover. And I was the poster child for their hoish ways. <laughs> but I weren't really the hoe. I was, I was a lovely guy. I just like talking to boys. Boys are great. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure. No. <laughs> They're like, like I, was, I went to all girls school. And so like, by the time I got to university, because call, you call it college, but we call it university. Mm. By the time I got to university, there was like so many men. And I just hadn't been in an environment with that much dick. So I was like, oh, I was like, I was a Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. I was like, oh, the Oompa Loompas. So I was going to all these guys and like talking to them. And then girls were like, she's talking to Jermaine on Monday and then Tony on Tuesday and she's a hoe. And I wasn't really, cause I wasn't sucking their dick. It was just conversation we were doing. You never figured out who made the post? No, so it was when Facebook had just been invented. I'm of that era, guys. Uh, Facebook was just only for like university students in the beginning. And when it hit England, we were the first university students to get it. And yeah, essentially you could make a page and it's all anonymous. You can make a, and it was called, yeah, King, my university was called Kingston University. And it was called Kingston University Uncovered. We're uncovering the biggest hoes on campus. And it was like <laughs> my face and then my uh, Facebook, linked to my Facebook account. And then people were like, this girl is a hoe. Leave your comments. And girls, guys were just like, yeah, she's this. And girls were like, yeah. One time she left my, uh, my my house with another guy and he was my boyfriend when he arrived but he left with her and i'm like that's not true that means you ain't got game if i can steal your man then that's a you problem so not a me problem but yeah that's a cool story thank you but yeah no it was it was it was horrible it was i was when i write about it in my book which is where you got it from it was a horribly <laughs> horrible time i was very sad well it sounds like there was a there was bullying in college and then yes. there was bullying in the comedy scene yeah and i think a lot like a lot of the book is about overcoming bullying are you right there, love? Are we boring you? Are you good, honey? A little reverse sneeze little from my old gal. Pond it. Nothing Pond a little, nothing a little opiate won't fix later. <laughs> what, what was she saying? <laughs> no, no, what thought was it was that. I just uh, sometimes she takes drugs. Uh, oh wow! But like a lot of the book is about overcoming yes. bullies. Yes. What's your sort of? What was your? What's your main lesson been? Do you in know doing what? that? Well, I didn't realize. So at the time, I'm very confident now. Look at me, I'm a bad bitch. But I wasn't always. <laughs> thank you. But I wasn't always. I was very insecure and I used to seek validation in other people. Can you look at me when I'm talking to you? In other people. I was, Jesus, I, what is this show? I was. I, I'll, what were you doing? Walk I, me through what went through your head just then. So I was listening. Yeah. But I was thinking about what we're going to next. And I was looking for Hallie who is our head writer, right. who I'm going to ask a question of to ask a question of you. Okay. And I didn't know if she was in here or on the other side of the right. glass. Right, so you decided to just look away from me well, mid-speech when I'm talking about my vulnerability and being insecure, right? Yes, because yes. I have a lot of undiagnosed things. Okay. And one of them is that I don't care if people don't look at me while I'm talking. No, okay. And I forget that people well, no, really care, care about we that. Because I, I just was listening I like eye carefully. No, but what's good about me. this, look no, no, and I'll keep try to sustain it as Please. long as I can. But the good Good news is us this moment yes. notified Hallie that I'm going to go to her next. Yes, so, so, so you didn't actually, actually have to look away. You could well, have just been like, hey, Hallie, and do and like, can you come and sort the shit out? You didn't have to be rude and ruin my thing now. And now we're making it about you. Yeah, I mean, look, I think there's a lot of ways this could have gone better for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. No, that, and that's and that's like that's what a, I'm. That's, that's a you problem. No, I think it's currently a little bit both of our problem, yeah. just no, because you're here. Well, no, because you're stuck problem, because you're here why is it my problem? because you're here. Okay. Because you have to be. You're because here now. Because you are unprofessional. It's my problem. Well, yeah, sometimes. Okay, cool. I mean, right. that's. Oh yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not saying it should be your problem. Really? I think it's. I don't think it's good that it's your problem. Yeah. But. Hallie, can we do the next segment, please? <laughs> wait, no, but wait, no, wait. Well, tell me what you learned. No, you don't care. No, I do care. <laughs> do you actually? I, I really do. We care. Thank they you, care. Audience. I feel like they care. I do All care. Right. This is what we're gonna hold my hand. Okay. That's what we're gonna do. So Yay. basically, mm -hmm. right? Eye contact and yeah, human I, touch, yeah. my two favorite things. Isn't it? That that's why I that's why yeah. I do a show in front of an audience. Yeah. Okay, so basically, what I learned, right, from being bullied, right, was that when people bully you, it's their insecurities, you know, it's their problem, it's how they view themselves, and you shining affects them in a way where they have to break you down. So if you get bullied, it's because 
the people are the wrong people. They're they're the mean ones, and you're a bad bitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got really, you got really nice eyes. Your eyes are pretty. You got pretty I'm eyes, gonna, babe. I gotta tell you something. Uh, why are you to nervous? human touch, eye contact, and compliments? Like, are you trying to fucking kill me? <laughs> 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 oh, like, I don't I run. Just, I don't work like this. I just like how awkward you are. It's just really like I'm like, hey, it's a, this is your show, you know. I, I, is, I you can you can relax. This is this. Everyone I, here is. If here I for could you. relax, none of this would be here. <laughs> <laughs> this is all because I can't You're relax. You're the star. They all love you. They're all here for you, babe. Look, I don't. Love you. Wait, wait, you're gonna, you're gonna fix me? Yeah. You're gonna fix me you're now? So, I don't you're think so. You're so anxious. Your you hands were so clammy. Yeah. <laughs> you're so uh, good. And clammy I, yeah. Hands. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whoa. Yeah, we're well, one podcast away from figuring it out. Jesus. <laughs> it must be hard being in this. This. This is. This is a lot, isn't it, honey? Yes. It is. It's okay. One time when I was being bullied. Mm-hmm. Talk to me. Uh, the, uh, uh, Mrs. Satz, I'm sorry, Ms. Satz was right. in front of the class. Yeah. And uh, every time she would turn and face the board, the kids sitting in front of me and the kids sitting behind me would lift my desk and drop it one inch. <gasps> oh, can my you believe God. that? Just so you're just so it's just like she faces the board and then just bam. You know what I mean? Why did they do that? Well, you, you, I thought, I mean, I was listening. You, the thing you said. What? No, no, but why, I, but why is that a thing? Like, why don't they just throw a paper ball at your head. Like, why lift, is lifting a desk a thing? I don't know. Why are there museums filled with medieval torture devices Cause, cause when punching works? Because people like want to be creative when they're mean. That's so, that's disgusting. I feel sorry for them. How dare they? I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry you went through that. Thanks. But they were trying to dim your light because you were a bad bitch and they oh, could sense that. I think I was... Um, wearing a no fear tennis t-shirt that was nice. three sizes too big nice. and i think probably they were right yes what if you, they were right no but you are a bad bitch oh thank you yeah <laughs> you should say it say i'm a bad no, bitch no i'm not gonna but, do no, it because i um, feel like you don't believe that you're a bad bitch say it he should say it say i'm a bad bitch is would you there's say, a fine hey, hey. Hey. Say, I'm a bad bitch. I'm a bad bitch. But, yeah! uh, but Don't it feel good? Look at the smile. Look at the you know smile. What, you know what I like about You know what's great about this? Look at the smile. I we think what's it. important about this. Do I? Yes. I think what's important about this, what I'm learning about this is there's such a fine line between encouraging and bullying in a sense. <laughs> because I don't know. Like, I think like, put this in a minor key. You're fucking me up right now. Yeah, really <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm dropping the table. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Now, so uh, uh, you've had this experience of overcoming bullying. Yes. Hallie, our head writer, yes. uh, had a bullying experience that I believe may have also involved Facebook. God, what happened? Um, also, I'm really sorry I wasn't here earlier. I was uh, taking a shit. And um, <laughs> I didn't know anything was happening. I thought, I got enough time, and I was dead Listen, wrong. You I take apologize. a shit at work? You are a bad bitch. Thank Listen. you. Well yeah, done, I mean, it queen. wasn't planned. It wasn't like part of well the event done. or anything. I'm happy for you. Um, but yeah, I had this experience. I thought, I was like, this isn't interesting. So this person who I thought was like a friend of mine from high school messaged me. I haven't talked to him since then. But you know I mean? Like just someone who was, I was in a bunch of classes with him. Like, you know. Just someone who I thought fondly of. Message he had Facebook, and I think he was becoming a youth minister or was in some, some sort of 12-step program, either way. What? And he said, hey, I just want to let you know, I'm so sorry about how mean I was to you during high school. Oh. I was so cruel to you, and I, I just really wanted to reach out. It really bothered me. And honestly, God, I had to reply, like, I thought we were friends. Oh, wow. And so I want to get your reaction, because I was like, if he hadn't done that, I would have just thought we were all kidding around. But then he did that, I was like, Oh, he hated you. Yeah. Oh, anyway, wow. so how do, what do I do with that now? That's my question to you. No, there's nothing you could do now. Okay. That's it. Just sit in your shit. Like, yeah. Literally, well, like literally. you're fine. Yeah. The fact that he apologized to you means that you're clear. You were on his mind. You he, you were living in his house rent free. Is that the what the Americans say? That makes so sense. that's what you were doing. So yeah, you've already won, honey. Oh, thank you. You've okay, already great. won. Well, don't worry. Don't you think it's a little concerning that he thought he was bullying you for years, and you thought you were just chopping it up with a yeah. with a roast. It with were you in a roast? I, I, <laughs> yeah, what was he saying? What was he doing? Oh yeah, no, just not even want to get into it. Just uh, just stuff, uh, horrible roast stuff. But like, I was so I, I just was like, yeah, that's like you do a friend would do. Oh, you thought he was negging you? Did you yes. want to smash? No. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, no, for okay. sure, no. no. I thought we were bros. I thought we were like, you know, just really? buddies. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. See, that's 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 a common thing with women because we're taught to believe that if a man's mean to you, it's because he likes you. So like any guy would be like, "You're shit," and I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> I want to have sex with you. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a hard one. But no, you've won. You've won at life. Thank you. You can go. Hey. You can go back and flush. Well, yeah, I went there for a second. <laughs> go round. flush. Go back round hey, too. get back in there. Yeah. Yeah. Keep everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Halle. What's up, babe? Any final thoughts for us? Oh shit! I, what is this? Just a little bit wow, of. Oh, it hurt me. I'm sorry. It's just a, It's a. Turn it. I don't like it. Where's my book? Why am my book up here? Oh, these were. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's so rude. God Guys. damn it! God got, damn it! We, we got a PDF. A PDF? You didn't get actual books? Should have told me. I would have given it to you. Well, I have a book. <laughs> so <laughs> it's called Living My Best Life, hon. Following your dreams is no joke. And it came out two days ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would just left New York. I went to Barnes & Noble in New York on Fifth Avenue and I signed copies. And it was very surreal. I was like, oh my God, I've, I've made it. So yeah, it's a, it's a crazy time. It's wild to write a book. It is. And I wrote it in two months. 90,000 words, 304 pages, two months. And I said, no social media, no going out, no alcohol, no dick. And I did it for two months. And I, the book is amazing. I'm so proud of myself. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't think I could go two months without social media. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, living my best life, hun. Following your dreams is no joke. Is out now. Everybody check it out. London Hughes. Thank you so much. Thanks it's so for funny. Me. London, everybody. Thank you.